this lesson, we're going to cover how to write code in VBA that allows you to save an Excel file to a set location on your network drive where the file name is based on a value in a cell of your spreadsheet. So you can see here we have a template here that has an output of daily sales for four different divisions. We have a selection box here where you can select any of these four different divisions. And the goal is we want to create VBA that will copy the data from columns B through D, paste it into a new blank workbook with the same formatting and values as this source here and then save it so that the file name is the date value here in this cell which is the max date on this data here as well as the value here the division name so the first thing we want to do is hit the keyboard shortcut Alt F11 to go into the VBA editor window. Anywhere in this project window, we're going to right click and insert a new module. When you write a module, you begin with the keyword sub for your subroutine. We'll just call this daily report. First thing we need to do is declare a few variables. We're going to have some object variables. Object variables are things like workbooks, worksheets, ranges. So you declare a variable with the keyword dim. And the first thing we need to do is give our variable an acronym. We'll call this workbook1. And it is a file type workbook. We're also going to declare this worksheet as a variable, and that's a file type worksheet. We're going to copy this here because this first workbook we declared is the workbook we're in now. Now we need to add a second workbook, so I'm just going to call that workbook number two. We're also going to have a variable called path for the location we want to save our output to and that is going to be a file type string and finally we have a variable for the file name we want to save it as that is also a string so we have three object variables here two workbooks and one worksheet so we need to set them anytime you have an object variable you have to use the keyword set so we're going to set this first variable workbook one is going to be equal to this workbook what does that mean the workbook we're in right now writing the code so that is this workbook we're going to set our worksheet our active worksheet in this workbook which will be equal to workbook one and then sheets, which is the active sheet we're in now, month to date sales. That needs to be enclosed in double quotes. So now we have our path we want to save to. So our path is going to be equal to the location on our network, which right here is where we want to save our files. So I'm going to copy this path. This needs to be enclosed in double quotes because it is a string. Now we're going to later concatenate this path to our file name variable. So we need to add another backslash on the end because after this is going to be joined with our file name. So our file name is going to be like these files here. We want it to be equal to the cell value that I mentioned earlier and we want it in this format. Four digit year, two digit month, two digit day, and then the name of the division. So our file name variable I'm gonna 
minimize this a little bit so we can see what we're doing. We want this equal to some cell values in our worksheet one. So we have range. We want to first get the date here in cell H3. So we have worksheet one variable and then the range H3. Now when you're dealing with dates for file names in VBA, they need to be enclosed in the format function. And the first input is our expression, which we've already typed here. The second input is the format we want it in. Well, we want it in four digit year, two digit month, two digit day. And that needs to be enclosed in double quotes. We want to join this to the cell value of G3, but we want to add a space in between. So we're going to use the and symbol and then double quotes with a space in between. We've got another and symbol and then we're going to reference our worksheet one again, this time range G3. Finally, we need to add the file extension to our file name. So we need another and symbol and then double quotes again and then dot XLSX so that we get the file extension we want. So we have our file name. So now what we need to do is we want to reference our worksheet one again, which is this active month to date sales worksheet, the range B through D. We just want to copy that entire column range. Now we need to set up our workbook two. So we reference that variable we declared. We need to set it up. So we use the keyword set workbook two. It's gonna be equal to workbooks and then add because we need to add a new workbook. So now we want to do a couple of things to this new workbook. We want to paste in values the data from our workbook one and we want to keep that source formatting as well. We want to have this color here and then the, you know, the number, date formatting and all of that. So I'm going to use the width statement because we want to do more than one thing to that workbook two. So we're going to say with workbook two active sheet and then range B through D. We want to paste special Excel values. We also want to paste special Excel formats. We can now end our with statement. And now what we want to do is save our workbook to this save as and then reference our file name. Our file name is going to be equal to the two variables we created here, the path and the file name. So I'm just going to reference our path first and then our file name, concatenate them with the and symbol. Now, when you're dealing with saving two files, you'll find that a lot of times you need to save over an existing file. And as you know, Excel gives you that warning message, hey, this file already exists. Are you sure you want to save over it? Well, 
that warning message will pop up and stop your code in its tracks. So if you want to avoid that, we need to begin this with the application and then display alerts and set that to false. And then once we've saved our file, set it back to true. Since we're going to be selecting multiple divisions with our selection tab, another thing we might want to consider is to close, you know, close our workbook two once we've done all our steps and saved it with the new file name. So we'll run through this by hitting F8, run through our code one line at a time and see what it's doing. Let me just minimize this a little. So when I execute this line of code, it will copy this data here. You can see that happens. Then we're gonna execute this line. We're gonna add our workbook two. There's a little bit of lag time here because I'm videotaping my screen, so I do apologize for that. It's just slow when I'm videotaping my desktop. We added the new workbook. So now what we're gonna do is paste our data values first. There it is. And then we're gonna paste in the formats. And there that is. We end our with statement. Now we're going to save our file name. So we should see a North 722 North file name. And you can see that changes that there up there. There is our new file name. And right there is our North 722 file. So I'll hit F8 one more time. Oh, sorry, two more times, and that will close the file. So now that file is closed, and we have our new, I'm sorry, we're back to our original VBA file where we wrote our code. So if I change this here to another division, and this time we can run our code all at once. So this time we're just gonna run this entire thing and it should run everything at once. There's a little bit of lag time, but now we have our 722 South Division file. So if I open this up, you can see again more lag time. Sorry about that, folks. But you can see we have our 722 South Division sales file as values with the formatting. So that is how you can create code in VBA to save a file with the file name being values in your cells in your spreadsheet. Hey, if you like what you saw today, please subscribe to the Excel Cave. Thanks for watching.